Hi, here's a, a quick basic example of um, how I've got my audio set up, uh, which might help you work out yours. Um, this is obviously um, OBS, um, it's repeating itself because I'm showing it, um, but, but mainly it's this, this bit here that you need to pay attention to, and this bit here where I'm moving the mouse now, here and here. So basically, what you do is you go, oh, my wife just made me a cup of tea, thank you darling. Basically, you go down to here where it's got the plus sign under sources, click that, and then you will select audio input capture, which is that one. Um, obviously, I've already got mine selected, but you'll type a name in there, and then you'll click OK. What I'll do, I'll, I'll go to existing, so don't want to add any more. So you'd have typed, you'd have left capture new, selected, typed a name in there, and then click OK. Right, you will then get a box. I have to double click it. That comes up something like this. It won't be exactly like this because this is the ASIO driver. But in this drop-down list here, you select which I think will be your Scarlett Focusrite device should be in there somewhere. You select that, and then you click OK. Then when you you won't see it generally here straight away because it will have been on this scene that you've added in. So you'll have to pull this across, and, and you can actually check so wherever I tried adding a different noise. Um, I'll do all, in case it's causing audio problems, I'll fade that one out. And as I told you before, if you right click on it, you can hide any that you don't want to see. So you can now see that my audio is going in to there. Now if you go over here to settings on the right hand side, click that. Go down to um, audio. You can see that I've got everything in here disabled. The reason for that is because I'm using the, the system direct, which um, is a lot easier to work out and understand when, once you've got your head around it. The monitoring device is basically what you're sending out to your stream. So that will probably be your uh, focus right again. However, if you're monitoring off your laptop, you might have to select whatever the name of the audio drive for your laptop is. You'll have to just play around with that. It'll be trial and error um, to see which one works best for you. Um, so yeah, I've got all that set like that. Um, I don't know if you want to see my other settings. Um, what have we got? It's uh, my general settings there. Um, I'll put settings for streaming. Um, you've seen audio video output setting most of these are grayed out because I'm actually using the system now and when you're streaming or recording it grays them out so you, you, you can't change them midstream so uh, that gives you an idea okay now you were talking about plugins um, you, you can use plugins on audio as well as video if you right click on the the audio um, power bars, meter, whatever, or the little cog at the bottom, you'll see this menu come up. Again, it might be slightly different in Mac. I've never used it on Mac, so I don't know. And you'll see one called filters. As you see, I've got some filters already set up. To add a new filter, you go to the add sign. It, it, every time you see an ad, it's generally to add something, whether it's in the scenes, sources, or filters. So you can click that. Then you can select any one of these if you've got any vs2 plugins selected you can select one of those um, and then obviously you click OK and it'll appear in this list to see that particular filter um, if, if it's got a line through like that that means I've turned it off so it's turned off at the moment so if I go to like Nova and click on the plugin you can now see that that plugins doing what I'm expecting it to do which is helping compress bottom end and lift a bit of top end and things like that and you can see the waveform as I'm talking so that gives you an idea of how that works so that's plugins for audio there's plugins for video as well um, and they work just the same you select the video um, source and then right click on it select filters and then on the drop down list select which uh, which filter you want to use and then manipulate it in the box that pops up. Um, so hopefully that'll give you a sort of idea how the mainly the audio works anyway. 
um, but you need to make sure that this is this is running here and again the only way that you can do that is if I show you this um, properties like I say select the top drop down box yours might look slightly different to this select your device you might then have to select the uh, channel one and two like I have here because originally I think these were on uh, mute so you might have to fill in other boxes just look down the boxes and decide what you need and then click OK uh, there is one other thing if you right click on it and select advanced properties um, you can change things in here I generally leave all of these ticked uh, they're to do with recording to output and I generally leave monitoring off for everything as well you can but it can cause problems um, oh, excuse me I think I'm gonna sneeze it's going away um, sometimes if you put monitor and output on you can get howl round and things like that so I generally leave that off because the way I'm monitoring my system is from my mixer anyway um, so I don't need to hear anything from the stream I want to hear how I'm sending it to the stream and then what I do to do a test is I'll have a listen to the stream via my mobile phone or something and headphones um, to check that I think it sounds okay and the levels are right in fact that's probably the best way of doing it is to um, start streaming just tell the people if anyone's watching that this is a test you're just setting it up and then get your phone uh, or something that you can monitor independently and, and join the stream as a as you as a, a listener would and then there will be a delay and then go and talk on your mic or play your background music sing a few bars and then quickly put your headphones in for your phone and have a listen make slight adjustments as needed and repeat until you're happy with how it sounds on the stream um, and then you should be good to go as always be careful about how much reverb and effects you put on because it will sound very much different in a room than it does on a stream and one of the biggest things that that people seem to do is just load their voice with reverb and it just they think it sounds good makes their voice sound bigger and everything but it doesn't you just need a hint of it just to sweeten the edges when when you're singing that's all you need um, and then once you've got that set right you should be good to go and uh, I look forward to seeing uh, your videos so hope that helps and uh, speak to you soon take care bye bye